to celebrate the start of the XFL season, join me live on YouTube for every game this weekend, where we'll live stream the action. We'll talk about the game, and you can ask questions. Each stream starts 15 minutes before kickoff. And now, on with our feature presentation. Last week, I made a video about one of the biggest broadcasting disasters in the history of the Super Bowl, where NBC, at Super Bowl XX, completely dropped the ball, and completely squandered their golden opportunity that they had with a large audience at their disposal watching the game. If you want to learn more about that, click the card in the upper right corner. But to summarize, NBC decided after the game to air the pilot episode of a really bad show called The Last Precinct despite the fact that the show got panned in test screenings, and despite the fact that the show didn't even have a premiere date or time set, meaning that even if you liked the show, you were straight out of luck with when the next episode was going to air. This was an absolute disaster. NBC lost in that time slot to CBS, which aired rerun programming, and did not have the benefit of having a lead-in audience of 100 million people and the show, unsurprisingly, got cancelled after just 8 episodes. An absolute disaster from the same network that brought you the A-Team as the lead out to the Super Bowl 3 years before. And don't get me wrong, it's going to be tough to top that when it comes to debuting a brand new series right after the Super Bowl. Everything about the execution of this was terrible, especially when you consider the other options that NBC had at their disposal. Having said that, if you want to talk about a non-pilot episode, and instead, a returning series premiering right after the big game, oh man, we need to talk about what happened this past week at Super Bowl 57. Because what Fox just did, turned out to be a catastrophic failure on so many levels, that when you break it down, makes complete sense as to why it bombed. I'm not talking about a bad decision. I'm talking about what might go down with no exaggeration, as one of the worst television decisions of all time, especially in the context of the Super Bowl. Because the Nielsen ratings are in, and they're not pretty. The lead-out program to the Super Bowl is widely considered to be the best possible spot that any television show can get. When done right, you have a built-in audience of over nine figures worth of people, and a third of the country watching and getting an impression of your show that they would not have previously gotten. It's a bump that most shows can only dream of. Now Fox usually does pretty well with their lead-out shows, as when they debut a show after the game, it works, and when they show a new episode of a show that's already out there, it elevates the show to another level. Heck, we saw Fox do this perfectly the last time they aired the game in 2020 at Super Bowl 54, when they aired the premiere for Season 3 of The Masked Singer, which drew 27 million people and then kept a steady audience of roughly 10 million viewers per episode, increasing its audience by more than 10% because of the Super Bowl bump. And after the Super Bowl, Fox decided that they were going to do this with Gordon Ramsay's cooking show, Next Level Chef. The premise behind the show is that chefs are cooking for their lives on one of three floors. The top floor, which has state-of-the-art amenities, the middle floor, which is your typical run-of-the-mill kitchen, and the bottom floor, which has nothing whatsoever. It was an interesting strategy to air this show after the game, instead of a pilot episode like Animal Control, or instead of a guaranteed ratings hit like The Masked Singer again, or even a new episode of Family Guy, seeing as that show has had a revival lately with its popularity on social media platforms. But this was Fox's plan. Get Next Level Chef to the next level, pun completely intended. If you can take a show and elevate it to one of the top shows in the country, then that's a win. As for the end result, Next Level Chef drew a grand total of 15.5 million viewers for its debut episode. That's it, just 15.5 million viewers. This was the third most watched Super Bowl of all time an average of 113 million viewers watched the game, which was a significant increase from the 99 million average from Super Bowl 56, with the peak audience being higher than that. And yet, by the time Fox's new show came on, 
roughly 87% of the audience for the Super Bowl tuned out. We're going to have some stats about how bad this is, because trust me, it's bad. But here's just a rough idea. Last year, NBC's leadout program, which was live coverage of the 2022 Winter Olympics, drew 24 million viewers after the game, and retained about 24% of its audience. This year's show retained 13%. When Fox aired The Masked Singer after Super Bowl 54, and 27 million people tuned in for that, the show retained 27% of its audience. To retain just 13% of your audience? That is laughably bad. For some perspective, the 15.5 million viewers is roughly the same number that Brooklyn Nine-Nine got after Super Bowl 48, and that was the second program, as they aired an episode of New Girl before that. It's the least watched leadout program since NBC had Super Bowl 9 back in 1975. And not only was that with a game audience of 56 million people, so half of what Super Bowl 57 got, but NBC aired the news. The last time a lead-out program was this poorly received viewership-wise was the freaking nightly news. Here's a graph showing viewership for the lead-out program at each of the last 35 years after the Super Bowl. So from Super Bowl 22 on. And you can see Next Level Chef right there at the bottom. And by a fairly comfortable margin, I might add. And not only that, but you think, okay, numbers for the first episode aren't everything. Did they get the bump? Obviously, it's an extreme example. But if all 15 million people that view the show now make it part of their weekly routine and tune in every week, and now you've got a show that generates 15 million viewers a week, that's incredible. As for the Super Bowl bump, absolutely not. Because when episode 2 aired on Thursday, the show drew a grand total of 1.92 million viewers. You heard that right. Under 2 million viewers tuned in for the next episode, meaning that you retain roughly 1.7% of your audience for the second episode. If we're talking about continuous programs, so not one-off events like what happened with the Winter Olympics last year, I cannot begin to stress how awful that is, especially since last year, the show average, across its nine Thursday episodes, not impacted by leading off after football Sundays, 1.91 million viewers. In other words, not only did the show not draw people to the screen after the game, but of the ones that it did, they all couldn't be bothered for a second episode because the second episode drew the same viewership numbers that season one did. Let's show another graph truly highlighting how bad this is. Again, Fox retained 1.7% of its audience for the second episode. I looked at the last 10 shows, excluding one-offs and shows that air every night, like The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, so every single weekly show and wanted to see how its audience for the first episode after the Super Bowl stacked up against the lead-in audience that it had. In other words, what percentage of people who watched the Super Bowl stuck around for not just one, but two episodes of your show? Prior to Next Level Chef, here's what those percentages came out to be in terms of retaining the Super Bowl audience across multiple episodes. Usually, you're able to retain somewhere in the ballpark of 9%. So as an easy example, if the Super Bowl draws 100 million viewers and you air a lead-out program, then the next episode of that program, as in the first episode to not follow the Super Bowl, will draw 9 million viewers. The lowest percentage here is New Girl, which only retained 3.1% of its Super Bowl audience across the second episode, while the highest is The Voice, which aired after Super Bowl 46 and retained a whopping 16% of its audience through the second episode. Next Level Chef? Just 1.7%, which is by far the lowest number. And it gets even worse. Guys, you don't realize how bad Fox dropped the ball with this. Because usually, when you air the leadout program, a good chunk of people who watch the leadout episode will watch your next episode. Let's ignore the Super Bowl television viewership numbers, and instead, just focus on the numbers for the leadout program, 
and the numbers for the very next episode of the show. Usually, a network is able to retain roughly 37% of its audience from whatever the lead-out program got. As an example, if the lead-out episode from the Super Bowl drew 10 million viewers, then the next episode of that show to air should get 3.7 million viewers. There are some outliers, like New Girl at the very bottom, which only retained 13.2% of its audience, and Elementary, which aired after Super Bowl 47 and retained over 52% of its audience. But it's pretty consistent across the board. For Next Level Chef, the drop-off from 15.5 million viewers to 1.92 million viewers of the next episode means that they only retain 12.4% of their audience episode to episode, well below their average, and by far, the lowest of the last 10 lead-out programs, which is when this data became available. This wasn't just like serving an undercooked steak to Gordon Ramsay. This was serving a raw steak without the lamb sauce. Seriously, it bombed that hard. So I think we need to ask ourselves the all-important question. Seeing as the ratings were garbage, and there is guaranteed to be no post Super Bowl bump whatsoever, why this failed so hard? Why did Next Level Chef as the lead out program flop so spectacularly to the point where it's going to be remembered as one of the biggest lead out flops of all time, and as one of the biggest blunders in Fox television history? Well, while there are many reasons that I can think of, there are two absolutely critical reasons why people just didn't care for Next Level Chef as the lead-out. And keep in mind that for these two reasons, I'm not talking at all about the quality of the show. This is not a place for me to give my opinions on the show, as even though I thought it was terrible, and that we never saw Gordon Ramsay in his element, and never even got to connect ourselves to any of the people involved, as they just started cooking right away, and even though it seemed pretty convoluted, and even though the editing was very rushed, none of these reasons have to do with that. They're all purely objective reasons that Fox absolutely should have seen coming from a mile away, and it's quite shocking that they didn't. Number one, they were completely blind to previous data points. They were blind to the ratings from last year. What do I mean by that? Not once, but twice, Fox decided last year then it would be a good idea to air Next Level Chef after coverage of football, showing an episode after Week 17 ended, and showing an episode after the NFC Championship between the San Francisco 49ers and the Los Angeles Rams. And what happened immediately after those episodes? The ratings went right back to normal. Episode 2, which aired after Episode 1 following the Week 17 slate, drew 1.84 million viewers while Episode 7, which aired after Episode 6 following the NFC Championship, drew 2.1 million viewers. The average of the 9 non-football lead-out episodes from Season 1 was 1.91 million viewers. The average of the 2 episodes following the lead-out episode, so Episodes 2 and 7, was 1.97 million viewers. In other words, no real difference. And think about it. What audience outside of the audience that cares about the lead-out show, is most likely to stick around until the end of Super Bowl coverage, trophy ceremony, and post-game analysis, and all. Football fans! And who watched the end of Week 17 and the NFC Championship? Football fans! Which means that there was a very good chance that last year, you had not one, but two opportunities to appeal to football fans. And they told you, straight up, that they didn't care about the show, and would not be adding it to their weekly routine, since you tried to get that bump twice, and didn't get it either time. So your next idea is to try this a third time? Why? This is the Bon Jovi fiasco at Super Bowl 37 all over again, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Except here, instead of an endless barrage of It's My Life, it's an endless barrage of Gordon Ramsay wanting some risotto. If the data is telling you one thing, and that one thing is very clear, and it's also clear that it's not a fluke, seeing as you tried it twice, then why would you do the exact same thing? Why would you do the opposite of what the data is telling you? Just baffling. Number two, 
Let's talk about this player right here that you're watching highlights of. This is defensive back Mark McMillan, and he had a very good career in the NFL, especially for a 10th round pick. He played in the league for 8 seasons, playing from 1992 to 99. He started 81 games, and in 1997, finished 2nd in the league in interceptions, and 1st in pick 6s, when he took 3 interceptions to the house for a touchdown. You're probably asking yourself, why am I bringing him up? Well, as it turns out, he was a contestant on Next Level Chef for Season 2. If you stayed around to watch the episode, you would have seen none other than Mark McMillan in the flesh. And not only did he play in the NFL, but there were two teams in particular where he was successful, and lasted multiple seasons there. What were those two teams? The Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles. As in, oh I don't know, the same two teams playing in the Super Bowl. And yet, not once in any of the promos for the show before the game, or during the game, was he featured. This was a slam dunk. This was a home run. This was whatever you want to call it. And they blew it. Not once did they say, coming up after the Super Bowl, find out what Kansas City Chiefs player and Philadelphia Eagles player will face their toughest challenge yet going up against Gordon Ramsay, or something like that. I'm sure there's at least a few people who might not have been interested initially, but heard that news and thought to themselves, well, I want to see this former player and see who it is, or would watch and root for them because of that prior team affiliation. And yet, it was never mentioned. This was incredibly lazy promotional work and incredibly lazy advertising. Centering some of the promos not necessarily around McMillan, but a mystery Chiefs and Eagles player could have brought in some of the football fans, but they opted not to do that for some bizarre reason. Combine all of that with the fact that they had a countdown clock on their screen throughout the postgame show, telling you how many more minutes were left until the show started, meaning that the choice was in your mind of whether you wanted to flip away, and meaning that you couldn't accidentally stumble upon it, and there was so much wrong with this, that I don't even know where to begin. Fox dropped the ball big time. Fox is going to have some serious reevaluating to do the next time they get the Super Bowl. I'll put it that way. Because when it came to airing the lead-out program after this one, Next Level Chef was a next level flop. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaguarGator9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.